Thank you so much to all the supporters to make this channel possible. I am Subliminal, and this is the Star Citizen's Guide to the Galaxy. The 2952 Intergalactic Aerospace Expo is here, and day two, we're going to be showcasing the highly esteemed Origin Jump Works. In today's video, I'll be giving you my thoughts and opinions on every ship here on display, rather than any detailed stats. If you'd like to get my thoughts on the entire 2952 IAE, check the playlist in the info card above. And while you're there, why not enter to win some starter packs for you or use them as gifts to friends? Without further ado, let's get to it. I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on every Origin ship on display, and we're starting right now. All right, so here we are on the showroom floor of the Expo Hall here during Origin Day. And let's familiarize ourselves with the layout. We have a below decks. And we have one hall open to the right. Not really very much. There aren't very many origin ships. Which is, I guess makes sense, right? Luxury manufacturers don't flood the market with a bunch of different types of ships. Um, let's start from um, smaller ships to the bigger ones here. So over here we have the 100 series. The starter ships. I guess the new price of starter ships is 60 bucks, huh? That's what we learned with the cutter, right? I would say I definitely would rather have a cutter over this. It's going to have a little bit more fiber. So this is the the 125A. I don't I just don't recommend this ship because it's so close to the price of an Aero or Gladius that I think you should just go that route. And then if you need something that's more practical, then just use the money you make from bounty hunting to get that ship. I, I really just don't, I don't like it because of the price. Um, if the price was better, if it was $45, or, or this one would be more than $45, it'd be like, I don't know, 50, 55. I, I, I could do that. Yeah, 55 bucks, but not at like, what's the price on this? Let me look it up. But this doesn't come with a game package. Yeah, your actual investment with the game package is going to be 75 bucks. Uh, and I just don't think that that's worth it. You could just get, you can get an arrow, you can get an arrow, or you're 15 bucks away from an arrow. You know what I mean? You can upgrade your Aurora or whatever to an arrow. Anyway, I don't know. That's just my thoughts on that. This has got a little bit of extra firepower. Um, it's got some extra missiles. Yeah, I believe. As a 325A, it's got like a, a missile uh, bay deal under here. Inside, you have some decent amenities. You got some storage for cargo. You got a bed to lie down in. Uh, so it's nice. You can do box missions and stuff. It flies really well. It's got a fuel scoop. There's benefits of it, but I just don't see the value. Unless you're just an Origin fan. It could make a really good snub. It could really make a really good snub. This is the cargo variant of it, the 135C. With this, you get some extra cargo in the rear. So that's nice. More cargo than the cutter. I believe it's more firepower with, than the cutter, too. These look like size 3 weapons on it. Um, yeah, that's that's the 325C. Again, still not worth the price. Uh, and, yeah, the 100I is the base variant that doesn't come with the extra cargo or the extra weapons. But, of course, you get it at a, at a, a discount. But yeah, uh, I, I, the only reason why I don't like the 100 series is because of the price. But like I said, it makes a good snub though. 65 for a starter 100i. Yeah, so 65 bucks, and and that'll I guess come with a game package for one 100i. Don't quote me on the prices. I'm just I'm giving. I just it's it's expensive. Just uh, buy an Aurora and then you know pick your your progression route from there. Whether you want to go with combat or something more docile. Or maybe pick up a mule if you know you're more docile. All right, anyway, I'm not a mule, uh, a cutter. All right. This is the 600i. My opinions on this ship is it it's it's uh, actually pretty useful for taking out hammerheads without throwing torpedoes. It's in the top three of ships to do that, in my opinion. From just my having my hands and fighting against one hammerhead, I think the, the Corsair's on top. Then followed by the Andromeda, and then this is next. Once the shields go down on this, you're kind of dead in the water. One good thing is that they just um, 
officially stated their goals to rework the interior of this. And I think it looks pretty good from IAE yesterday, if you didn't see it. Yeah, I think the 600i is a dope ship. It's a good ship to have. It's got huge, like, three size five weapons on it or something like that. You slap some cannons on that thing, and it'll eat up a hammerhead for uh, solo ERTs if you don't like throwing torques. And then, of course, we have the 890 jump. Well, I mean, what do I say about this ship? You can afford it. If you can afford it, you probably don't give a shit about my opinions. And if you can't, then you can't. As a matter of fact, people are having trouble buying it. There's people who can afford it but can't buy it. Um, it's a, it's it's a big ass it's a big ass luxury yacht. I don't I don't know what to say, man. You, you buy it or don't. <laughs> I can't really give you an opinion to help you on that. You can mount size threes to the uh, 100 series, but they're fixed. That's fine. Fixed is fine. You should be fixed on a ship like that. It actually flies pretty well. Yeah, that's that's much more firepower than than the the cutter. But I think I'd just rather go with the Mustang Alpha if you want to start her with some firepower. The Mustang Alpha is actually not really not that bad. All right, coming around the corner here, we've got the 300 series. I don't I'm I, I don't like the 300 series anymore, man. It's too fragile. I was doing my my make it fit. And I had to break the wings off of a bunch of ships to get ships inside the Corsair. And every ship took me like five hard smacks on the ground to knock the wings off. This one got knocked off with one every time. It was super easy, barely an inconvenience to knock the wings off this thing without even having them get shot. Just physically running into something. And when you do, you lose a lot of the mobility. It's pretty much useless because the... I don't know if you want to call it poor design is that the the main some of the main maneuvering thrusters are right here i think that's a main maneuvering thruster anyway it's very hard to fly without that without that that's that scoop there so it's beautiful like i wish that it was it could be you know as durable as like the titan because then i could recommend like a 325a but I, I really just can't. I don't think... I think you should skip this ship. Don't upgrade to it, you know, from your starter. It's got amenities like a bed to log out. You got a, a moon roof that's pretty dope. It's a cool ship, but the wings need to be more durable. And then it'll, it'll be a much more viable option. All right, heading over here, we got the 325A. Another ship that I just... I don't... Oh, this is the 315P. Okay, this... It's probably the best one. I'm sorry. I, I saw the the, the the color yellow. I, I thought it was the the, the, uh, the racing variant. But no, this is the, the 315P. So this one has two cargo bays. There's one here that I'm standing on here. And then there's one here. I think it has a total of 12 SEU. This is a pretty good smuggling ship. If you want to, like, smuggle some drugs, you get some uh, 12 SEU of Widow. It rides smooth. It's got, like, a tractor deal here. It's not functional yet, but it will be. It doesn't, you don't, it don't care about the armaments. It's got some fixed size, fixed size threes or gimbal size twos. And this is probably the only one that I recommend. Price is reasonable. Yeah, definitely get get something like this over a, over a 100 series. If you if you're a passive player, if you got the SUU space, you got the same amenities inside as the 300 series. This is the only one that I can recommend for like a, a niche scenario. Let's just skip over to the other 300 series over here. Drake does have two days. You can go to it right now. Both both hall, two halls are open right now. All right, here we go. This is the actual racing variant. The what I don't like about this is that it's only fast in a straight line. It's like a drag racing ship, which I don't understand the purpose of it. We're not. I don't think anybody's gonna be drag racing in the game. I really don't see the purpose of the ship. I'd rather just get an M50 and actually be able to turn. I think that'll that'll take you much farther in whatever racing this game is gonna have. I mean, what's the sense of drag racing in a game? It's not like you could, in this game, because it's not like you could shift gears and have some sort of a, an advantage over somebody. I, I really just don't see the point. Inside, uh, I'll show you guys the inside. You lose the, the amenities like the sink and the extra room because the engine takes up space. What you actually wind up having is just the bed to log out in. And, it, and all of them have that, that toilet there for all you guys who are fascinated with being able to poop in the verse interdiction interdiction running interdiction might actually be a thing now with the with the master modes on the horizon 
So that could be that could be something. But no, you can interdict with the 325A. Or yeah, the 325A is an interdictor. That's just a that's a racing ship. This thing is still going to be fast and it's going to have whatever benefits an interceptor is going to have within the master modes. Meaning, I think we're speculating that within the master modes, this will be able to come out of quantum and arm itself, get the shields up, get the weapons up and everything ready to fight quicker than a than a light fighter would. I'm pretty sure that that's that's the way that this is going to work. Yeah, interdiction. Boom, it says it right there. So this is an actual interdiction ship. That the racing ship may not get those bonuses, but this the, the 325A is fast as well. It's dope that it's got uh, a fixed or fixed size four, and 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 uh, fixed size three. So it's got extra firepower to match the Titan, but it still suffers from the weak wings. That could get fixed one day, and that would totally change my mind about this ship. It's literally just this one Achilles heel. That's the reason why I no longer rec recommend it to anyone. It's a shame too because it used to be my favorite ship. All right. Here we go with the 400i. There's nothing to do with it right now. To my knowledge, they haven't reverted it into a state where you could put a rock in it. We need to be able to deflate the tires on the rock. That's what we need to do. <laughs> we need to be able to deflate the tires on the rock, man. There's nothing to do. I like everything about the ship. Um, I'm not one to bring up use of space, but it the layout is cool. It's got a great use of space. I thought it was hideous for a little bit, but it grew on me. It, it does look weird, but it, I get where they were trying to go with it, and they nailed it. I think that this is another kind of let's wait for the ex exploration gameplay loop to come in before I'm going to get excited about this. But yeah, like cool ship. If we could get a rock in there somehow, then we can actually do something with it. It could be a luxury, you know, ex like cruising ship that you can use to bring random vehicles to random places to do whatever kind of things you want to do. All right. Headed downstairs, we have an actual racing ship that if you want to get into racing, I think you, you have a good job. It can turn um, and it's fast. I mean, that's really all I have to say about that. Um, it's a it's a pretty ship too man i really like how they went with like the whole ferrari open engine concept back here with this this open engine design they have these glass panels these glass panels to showcase the the engines inside i don't know if that makes any sense but whatever i don't care it looks cool and uh and it's 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 fast that's all i really have to say about that all right coming around this side we have the 85x so uh very very un uh, an unpopular ship here this is the snub for the 890 jump i believe it comes with one if not you can just buy it anyway right whale's gonna whale but it is it's a it's just like a, a duo cruiser you and you and a buddy you and your significant other just top in cruise around the verse don't have to keep, don't worry about the firepower it's not great but it, it just it flies smooth yeah it's you just cruise actually now wait a minute Post 314, a bunch of size ones ain't nothing to balk at if the ship is maneuverable. Can I turn it on in here? Remote turret where? On what ship? I know I can't access it from this seat, but I'm thinking maybe I can, like, turn it on. Copilot operates a remote turret on here? How do I know? How have I not known that? Yeah, that looks like a remote turret. Can it even see what the pilot's shooting at? That's weird, huh? I feel like they should just put that on the nose. Maybe make it somehow retract. If they want to keep the design looking sleek. Wow, I learned something new today. Okay, so then you need a co-pilot to get all that firepower. Wow, I mean, it's just two size ones. It doesn't look like it can be upgraded. Wow, but that's, wow, I just learned something today. That's cool. You can use it as the pilot too, really. Shout out in the comments if you did too. All right. Then we have the, um, the hologram hall or whatever you want to call it. This is the G12A. Yep. Uh, it's it's an anti-air um, luxury all-terrain vehicle. Uh, I guess that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> it's going to fit into the 600i um, and obviously anything else that's bigger, but it's kind of designed for that. Um, there's also other variants. 